there's a thing that those successful people have that I don't have, and that's why it's not working. Yeah. So it's a matter of me going out and getting a thing. But it, it was mind-blowing because it turns out that it, that's not how it happens. They, that's not how it works. In fact, it's the exact opposite of that. I've recorded a video blog. It was about having breakthroughs with money. It's all connected to the pilot episode that I recorded uh, at the end of 2019 with my friend Ron. It took me two years and two months to get back to this raw material that I just avoided doing for two years, two months. I hope you enjoy. Say hi to Brendan. Brendan, where are we? We are in uh, a Jamaican restaurant whose name I can't remember right now. What do you do for a living? Tell, tell the audience, what do you do? I've been a professional audio engineer ever since I was 20 years old. For seven years I worked at the largest rehearsal studio in Los Angeles. There I used to do sound for like the biggest artists in the world. Prince, Stevie Wonder, Elton John, Usher, okay. the Backstreet Boys. Tell me a little bit about your everyday job. What is it like to be an audio engineer? It's awesome. It is the best. I started out in the music industry and I worked in the music industry for a long, long time. But for the past five years or so, I've worked in uh, television. I work on a TV show now. My job is like too good to be true. What I do for money, I love doing it so much and I would do it for free. Even if, if there was no such thing as money, if I didn't need money, I would still be like, hey guys, can I come, <laughs> can, can I still do this work and do this job? For, and how long have no you been in that position? Uh, about five years, five and a half years, maybe six. You don't count? I don't, so many people, like they know. Like the past is important? They know. So the, the fact that I do have my job Job on the TV show is a really big breakthrough for me because I had worked at the biggest rehearsal studio in Los Angeles for seven years. It's at Center Staging in Burbank. Okay. People in the music industry know Center Staging. For for years, I, I was I had seniority there. I was okay. like one of the senior audio engineers at this company. I was ready to move on for years, and I never did. I thought that it was because nobody else would take me because any other job that I would go to after that I wouldn't like it as much. My really good friends who worked on this TV show offered me a job to work on the TV show. And if I hadn't done the Landmark Forum, I almost definitely would have said no to this job. So what was it like before? Before you you actually said that you didn't believe someone would hire you. What did you discover well, in the Landmark Forum? All that was going on is that I was afraid to leave my comfort zone. As long as I worked at Center Staging, I'm safe. What was it like for you to think about losing it? It, it was actually like really shameful. The 27 Club is a theoretical club consisting of famous musicians, actors, and artists with one morbid membership qualification. Death at the young age of 27. I mean, I was so young. I was 27 years old and, and I was like already done exploring and done stretching myself. And I felt like I had to do that, like it was the smart thing to do. But honestly, like when I was alone with myself at home, like I was ashamed of that, you know? It made me feel disappointed in myself. When I was in the forum, I saw myself being a 27 year old man living like I'm old, already set with my retirement and, and like, okay, so, you know, the forum is the weekend and then Monday is like the first day when you go back into your life. So the thing that kept me stuck where I was in my career had nothing to do with my career at all. It was just my own fear and how uncomfortable I was to have that I'm leaving conversation with someone that I love. And so if I never got the ability or the power to have that, hey, I'm leaving conversation with somebody that I love, I would still be there. And, I'd... and where else in your life did you have this fear of I'm leaving? At the time, I held so much resentment against my ex-wife for telling me that she was leaving. A few months before that point... How I... old were you then? 27. It all happened at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so she, my ex-wife, is the, she's the one who did the form, and she's the one who, who told me to go do it. She's the one who, she's Israeli. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> What's her name? Yarden. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yarden is the one that I have to thank for my life. <laughs> thank you, Yarden. Oh, my God. Yeah. Us um, Israelis, it's horrible. I, 
had so much resentment and anger. I was so depressed and just beating myself up because she did the thing that I didn't have the bravery and, and the courage to do, which is to say to someone that she loves, hey, I'm leaving. And it was just such like a, you can't do that. <laughs> when I was in the forum, I called her and told her, thank you for leaving. We had been per playing like breakup chicken for like a year. I told her, I get that by you leaving, you gave yourself your life back and your freedom back, but I want to thank you for being the one brave enough to rip off the Band-Aid when I wasn't brave enough to do it, because I realize now, because you did that, you gave me my life back. I'm free because you were willing to set both of us free. She left you, you did the forum, and then in the forum you got that you want to quit your job, which you already knew, but you actually I, was brave, yeah. brave enough to take the actions, and then you did. Yeah, I, I knew that I wanted to leave there for years, and I couldn't do it. Your job was your wife. Yeah. <laughs> Clear. And since my wife left, now I need to cling onto my job even more. Yeah. For sure. The real wife. Oh. But you are a true Klingon. You may be smaller and weaker and slower and, and smaller than my other officers, but you are Thank you for sharing. This is this is incredible. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, that's what's so great about the forum. I mean it's it's available to anybody. I mean you just gotta spend the money and be in the room and participate and, and there you go yeah you, you get it just like everybody else we got that money has nothing to do with money it has to do with the conversation you had in your head yeah. but it had a lot to do with communicating a breakup so money is not the money it's the conversation we have about something in that area yeah. right another well, way look i i didn't get anything you it, didn't it, get it. it disappeared it disappeared shit went away that's yes. a phenomenon yes that happens a lot that's transformation is disappearance transformation and breakthroughs is not about getting something that you don't already have it's a subtractive phenomenon it's a thing where what's between you and your breakthrough what's between you and the breakthrough life is something and the phenomenon that takes place is disappearance something goes away yeah i didn't change what disappeared for you in this area of money specifically with asking 300 dollars what was there that disappeared the previously unnoticed assumption that i'm not allowed to ask for that much money I didn't even notice that that was like a thing that I thought. And as soon as I noticed, then I got, well, who said that? And then I realized, oh, only I say that. Show me the money! People but it's are, fascinating. It, it is because, fascinating. Because it goes against everything that we are taught and everything that we understand about how I elevate my performance. Everything yeah. that I had ever learned in my entire life up until that point about how I elevate my performance is by gaining something that I don't already have. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> everything. Yeah, my you're right. Life, yeah. Every bit of advice. There's a thing that those successful people have that I don't have and that's why it's not working. Yeah. So it's a matter of me going out and getting a thing. But it, it was mind blowing because it turns out that that's not how it happens. That's not how it works. In fact, it's the exact opposite of that. As it turns out, I have something that they don't have and me having that thing is holding me back. <laughs> and so it's a matter of me losing a thing that I have that they don't have. And now that I've lost it, now I can be as free as they are. Yeah. Because now none of us have that thing. Mind blowing. Mind blowing. And it, and it just goes completely opposite against everything that I had ever been taught up until that point. Now, you really nailed it on the head talking about the disappearance thing. That was, that was the goal. Because they, that is what it is. It, it's, it's disappears and and that's what has breakthroughs like that and transformation like that be so elusive because everybody knows that they want it and everybody gets so resentful about the idea of having a breakthrough and really like pissed off at a conversation about breaking through something that, that I'm challenged with because it's all I think about all day oh you know like yeah i've tried everything because i've tried to go out and get everything that's why disappearance is such a punch in the gut because it turns out it's the opposite <laughs> of what everybody tells us it turns out we've been doing it all wrong the all whole wrong. time the whole time and the moment that i got it i realized like i i would have been chasing that carrot forever yeah 
for the rest of my life. Oh, and yeah. I would have never known that it was impossible, that it was all in vain. So did you watch the video I did with Gron? Yes. How was it? It's great. Yeah? Yeah, it was awesome. I love it. Cool. I think mine's better. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Mine's better, Ron. <laughs> oh, I love Ron. He's okay. <laughs> what? He's okay. You're right, Neve. Ron sucks. <laughs> I didn't want to say it out loud. <laughs>